Mm -hmm. So if we stick a center in here, okay. this center and the center of the spindle mm -hmm. should be exactly in line. What I do to start off, I do not cheat just because I've done it so much in my life. Basically what I do is I'm going to take my six inch scale. I'm going to measure this and it measures to three and a half inches. Okay. This is absolutely critical. I'm gonna screw this up just a little bit because it's already set. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk about the jaws a little bit. So this is a four jaw chuck. Each one of these jaws runs independently. And what I was taught a long time ago and what I have my students do when I'm getting ready to start indicating my part, you only want to work on one axis at a time. And you notice I've got A, B, A, B. Obviously I don't do this except for in school, mm -hmm. but it, students will start getting lost in where axis they're actually working on. Sure. So um, I just tell them to write a and B. So looking at this, as a machinist, you want to use everything that you can visually. And on these three jaw chucks, you notice you got these rings. Mm -hmm. People go, why, why do they have rings? Well, these rings are actually to help us measure. And if the jaw is sticking out further than what the ring you just take your six inch scale. Cause you want these to be as set as close to three and a half inches right off the get go so that you're not fighting your part as you're trying to indicate it in. So what I like to do, I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna guesstimate. I, I have no idea. I'm just gonna start making things match up. I'm gonna come in here you see how the top of this jaw starts to angle off? I'm gonna come in here and just set it right to the top of that radius because I don't care what it is at this juncture. But I want all four jaws to be the same. And I'm gonna take my six inch scale, I'm gonna come in here and I notice I'm about I'm actually not too far off. I'm about an eighth of an inch off. Really? Yes. I think. No. That's three and a half inches. I got two and a half inches. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm gonna work on one axis at a time. I'm just gonna bring this up. You notice how it drops off at another 45 degree angle? See this little mark right here? I'm just gonna bring that up until it hits that 45 degree. Like I said, at this juncture, I just wanna keep them all four the same. And the reason I'm doing this, instead of just trying to make it three and a half inches here to here, is like I said, I wanna keep them all the same. The closer you can keep them all the same, the better off you are. And I'm a half inch over my three and a half. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna come in here. I'm gonna go. With that one there, you still need to go out, yep. Yeah? On that jaw. Keep it on that jaw. Here. Out. Inch 40. There is a hidden line there, isn't there? Yeah, so you still have to go out to here, yeah. Somebody made their own line? Somebody looked like they made their own line. Huh. You notice I'm getting really, really close. But I still don't really have a whole lot to go off of. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my six inch scale. I'm gonna come over here. 
and I notice that I'm at about 9 sixteenths. I'm at about 9 sixteenths. I'm at about 9 sixteenths all the way around. So what I'm going to do, we're going to give it one more turn. You want to keep everything come back on the measure. Looks like it's about three eighths. Three eighths. A little over three eighths. Now I'm going to check. You know, we're just a little under our three and a half. So then it's just a matter of back it off, back it off, back it off, back it off. And I mean, I don't think it'll fit in there, but it's about three and a half inches. But you see how close I am right now? This will save you a lot of time in the long run. And if you notice, I'm just gonna do this. See how that fits in there? Yeah. But it's loose. So now I'm gonna come in here and we're just gonna snug, rotate it, snug, rotate it. We're just going to snub them up. And now, basically what we're going to do, the old boys at Murray showed me this little trick. This is super duper nice little deal so you don't have to stick an indicator up here mm -hmm. like um, using, uh, and you always have to turn around and look at it. Sure. Basically take your little piece of three eighths, mm -hmm. turn it down till it fits. Your one inch indicator, this is a one inch dial indicator. Each one of these is a thousandths mm -hmm. per revolution. Uh, one full revolution is a hundred thousandths, travels up to one inch. We can stick this right on our lathe. We can come right over here. Now I can look right square, square down to my indicator. And then adjust this. And then basically what I always do is you want to put a load on this mm -hmm. indicator. Okay. And I'm just going to turn this to zero. And then I'm just going to roll it 360 degrees. Do you notice how that dial is going all the way around? So the very first thing I'm gonna do to figure out where I'm at, I'm gonna go back to my scale. I'm gonna look. So that one is actually sticking out a half inch. This one's sticking out three eighths. So if this one's sticking out a half, and this one's sticking out three eighths, right off the get-go, I'm not even gonna look at my indicator. I'm just gonna back this off a little bit. I'm gonna tighten a little bit. And see how right off the get-go, the, the huge adjustment that made? So then I'm just gonna bring this back up. I'm just going to work on one axis at a time. And like I said, I, the closer you can get this right off the get-go mm -hmm. and keeping your jaws equal, the less fighting you're going to have to do with it. It's especially true on this. I don't know if I have you guys do that. I'm just do this. So I'm going to set this to zero. I'm going to roll it 180. And I'm going to look. My needle went that direction. And... This is just trial and error. I'm gonna start to tighten it. You notice it didn't go back wrong towards way. zero, went the wrong way. So I'm just gonna loosen it just a little. I'm gonna come back over here. 
just to make sure this thing is snug. I'm gonna snug it. Did you notice it did a big move? Mm -hmm. So one of the jaws must not have been, absolutely. So I'm gonna start it. Set this to zero. I'm gonna roll it 180. I noticed when I tightened it back there, we're about a thousandth. We're at about a thousandth. See how we got that to come in there like that? Mm -hmm. So if we come in here and went, and this is not perfectly round. You can you see the marks on this? So if you get this, I will try to tighten B up just a little bit. There you go. I guess the number one most important thing is, especially tell your students, if you get it, if you get it to run true, mm -hmm. you still gotta make sure that it's in there nice and tight. So, cause you don't want this to come out on you when you were turning it. So yeah, that's why you definitely want to make sure you get it. And if you don't, you're just gonna have to keep moving it mm -hmm. but if you keep shifting it it's going to make more of a mark mar up your part and then you could get to a situation because this has never happened to me before i moved it so far that it, it, i couldn't get it to move anymore because i marred up the part so mm -hmm. bad and it was on a big part so i was always just taught take your time get it as close as you can right off the get-go keep your jaws even as close as you can right off the get-go then you won't fight it yeah